Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be discussing all we know in terms of rumours of the Volcanic Islands GPU. Formerly, of course, this card was known as the 9000 series. However, AMD have, from what the rumours indicate anyway, decided to change the name a little bit. The card is now going to be known as R number and then 200. So, for example, for the higher level cards, it might be R9290. So, it would be R9290. For a medium range type of card, it, may, it might be the Radeon R8270. And, of course, the generation that's after that will be known as Radeon R9390 and so on. So, it's a little bit like a cross between the old numbers of... AMD and NVIDIA's current generational number system. So other than the name in convention and the fact that of course the code, the code name is Volcanic Islands, what else do we know? Well, slightly off topic, but we do know that its successor is going to be known as the Pirate Islands, but in terms of specifications, from the leaks it seems that there's going to be a radical change to the whole architecture. For a start, we are going to be seeing 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. The memory bus from the leaks appears to have been increased. We are no longer going to be seeing 384 bit as we are in, say, Tahiti. And indeed, it's going to be 512 bit bus, which is going to be a ridiculous amount of memory bandwidth. Indeed, we could be seeing about 352 gigabytes per second, assuming standard GDDR5 memory speeds remain true. So what about the other stuff? Well, for one thing, it appears that we're going to be getting a double the amount of stream processors. I say again, double. Currently, the high-end 7000 series cards have 2048, which is pretty damn impressive. However, the Volcanic Islands are going to be hitting 4096, which is absolutely ridiculous. Moreover, they're going to be doubling the TMUs, as well as the ROPs. The TMUs are going to be 256 versus 128, and 64 ROPs versus 32. Now, as anyone really familiar with GPUs will know, 256 TMUs equals texture mapping units, and ROPs, raster operation units, are going to mean that we're going to be seeing absolute ludicrous amounts of resolution. Most likely as well, it will be excellent for people who have multi-monitor setups, and for those who are interested in playing the latest games at ridiculous amounts of anisotropic filtering, as well as anti-aliasing. It's also going to be absolutely fantastic for the next generation of games which are going to require much higher fill rates. Now, from the early leaks, it appears that the 4096, I'm sorry, I'll say that again, 4096 stream processors will be arranged in 16 SPU, that's stream processor modules. Each of those will hold 64 processors, and they will feature, um, each will feature four ACE, that is asynchronous compute engine units and of course they will handle the data, they'll accept the data and then they'll pass it over to the SPU stream processing units to actually process the data. In addition to the parallel compute module, also known to its friends and buddies as PCM, it's also going to feature eight SPMs. Now SPMs stand for Serial Processing Modules. This will allow for parallel computing and could also be part of a dedicated HSA model, module as well. As you would expect, we have absolutely no idea what the power consumptions or whatever else of the GPU is going to be. It does appear that it's being shrunk to a 20nm processing um, size, so who knows. It also appears that we're going to be seeing a mid-October launch. And rumours point to two GPU variants, which would be the XT and the Pro. Similarly, the systems apparently are going to have eight DDR5 setups, four DDR5, as well as eight DDR3. In other words, multiple different chips with different levels of memory configurations, as well as, of course, different memory speeds and so on. And as I said, the GPU can handle a maximum of 4 gigs. 
Now it is important to know that all of this information of course has not been confirmed yet. For example, there has been some information that there are dual fan configurations as well. So whether some of those, for example, the ones with 4 gigs are going to be dual GPU configurations, it's still unknown. Regardless, the cards themselves are going to be absolute monsters and no doubt are going to make short work of pretty much any game out there. I have a feeling that NVIDIA themselves are going to be putting out something pretty awesome, of course, when they release next, their next range, next range of cards. And it has been known that PC gaming itself has been gaining quite a lot of momentum. As far as what we understand it, the sales for PCs, as in, for example, from, say, Dell, are lower. But from enthusiasts, which I assume probably yourself is, and of course myself, um, they're actually going up. So in other words, people who are actually going in, buying graphics cards, CPUs and so on, that's actually on the rise, so that's good news for PC gaming. Regardless, these GPUs of course are much more powerful than just for gaming and they can be used for multiple purposes as well because of the GP GPU nature of them. So we're going to be seeing quite a lot of options in the next few years of course for PC gamers. Anyway, that's just about it for this particular video. Unfortunately, we don't have any idea what the price range could be, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.